So now we're going to be sketching a periodic graph if we know the equation. So if you know y equals 2 cos 3x, you should be able to sketch it with some pretty decent accuracy. So let's jump into it. It's a bit of a puzzle. First of all, we know that it's a cosine curve. So we know that it's going to start at the top. It's going to look something like start at the top, come down, back up, and down again. That's what a cosine curve looks like. We'll do a couple of periods of it. It's going to look something like that. Okay. So, we know it's going to start up at the top of its amplitude. Now, what is its amplitude? It's got an amplitude of 2, which means that this value here is going to be 2. And it means that the value down here is going to be the negative of that. It's going to be negative 2. So, drawing this again, we know that it's going to start here. It's going to come down to negative 2, back up to 2, down to negative 2, back up. My sketch is dodgy, we'll make it better. Alright, now, what about its period? Now, remember that period equals two, uh, sorry, equals 360 divided by B. Now, we know the B value. The B value is 3. So, period equals 360 over 3 equals 120. That means that this graph is going to repeat every 120. All right, I think we have enough now that we can try to graph this. So we're going to go from here down back up here, and that's going to be 120. I can repeat this again, down back up, and that's going to be, you can see I'm really doing this quite fast. We're going to fix it though. All right, so. One period, 120. Another period, 240. You can see how ugly my sketch is. This does, is not going to be okay. But let's think about how it's actually... Let's put some more points on it. Half of the period is about here. And that is 60. Uh, actually, let's write the 60 where it should sit. Here. Half of this is 30. Let's put that there. Somewhere between 60 and 120, halfway between 60 and 120, is 60 plus 30, which is 90. Now, those points are important because now I can get rid of that terrible sketch that I just drew and draw it more neatly, draw it more along those four points because my graph is going to start here it's going to pass through 30 on the way down. It's going to be at negative 2 when it reaches 60. It's going to pass through 90 on the way up. And it's going to finish at 120. So now I have four nice points. Now you have a pen and paper, so you'll be able to do this better than I do. But I'm going to try now. Let's see. Start here. I'm having a bit of trouble with my stylus here. Let's make sure it works. All right. Go down to 30. Through 60 there, back up to 90, back up to 120. All right, you can see that is a much neater curve. Now, we can do the same thing with this second one here. Uh, halfway between 120 and 240 is 120 plus 60, which is 180. Uh, halfway between 120 and 180 is 120 plus 30, which is 150. And halfway between 180 and 240 is 180 plus the 30, which is 210. And again, we're going to pass through here. We're going to get down to the bottom, about there. We're going to get to here, and we're going to get to here. And again, let's see if we can do it. A nice, smooth curve down, back up, and down again. And it should look pretty good. Now the question will probably tell you how much you should sketch. So my question should have said something a bit more like between where zero is less than x, less than 240. And you can see I've sketched this from zero all the way to 240. So make sure that you are checking there to see how far you're supposed to sketch, how many periods of the graph you're supposed to sketch. Um, I might do one more. Feel free to look at this and then just jump straight into it. But I'm going to move through this next one a little bit faster uh, so you can see how I would really do it. 
All right, so we're going to jump into this. We can see that it's a sine curve, which means that it's the start here at the origin, and it's going to go wee like that. Okay, good. We can see it's got an amplitude of three, which means it's going to have a top of three and a bottom of negative three. I find it useful to draw some dotted lines, dotted horizontal lines from three and negative three. I haven't used a ruler, and you can see I'm going to suffer for that, but you should use a ruler for these dotted lines. All right, finally, we want to find the period. We know that the period is going to be equal to uh, 360 over the B value. We know that the B value is 2, so we got 360 over 2. The period is going to be 180. We want to graph it between 0 and 360. So let's put a 180 here. Double that to here, and that's about 360. And that's where we're trying to graph to. Take the period, which is 180, and divide it into four segments. 90, 30, oh, I can't add up. Sorry, let's try it. 90, half of 90 is 45. Halfway between 90 and 180 is 90 plus 45, which is 135. Do the same here. Halfway between 180 and 360 is 180 plus 90, which is 270. Halfway between 180 and uh, 270 is 180 plus 45, which is 225. And halfway between 270 and 360 is 270 plus 45, which is 315. And now we draw our curve. I'm going to try and do this neatly, but I'm not going to succeed, I think. Start here, down to this one, down to this one. Oh, wait, it's a sine curve. Start at the origin. Start here, up to here, down to here, down to here, back to the start. Up at 225, middle at 270, down at 315, middle at 360. Okay. Through there, back down to at 90. We're going to 135 next. Up to 180 next. Up to 225 next, down to 270, down to 315, up to 360. All right, and that is our sketch of y equals 3 sine 2x between 0 and 360. You can see the curve's pretty nice. It probably could be a little flatter on the top. It's worth you taking a look at what cosine functions and sine functions look like so you can get a sense of how nice and fluid that shape is that nice little wiggle to it that is the level of detail that we are looking for when you sketch these functions a cosine function starting at the top a sine function starting in the middle and labeling our axes all the way along